It's one of the most enduring mysteries in American history. What happened to labor leader Jimmy Hoffa? The FBI believes Hoffa was murdered by mobsters back in 1975, in part because of what he knew about the mob in Las Vegas. Now, someone has stepped forward to tell what really happened on the day Hoffa disappeared. The man who's talking says he's the person who pulled the trigger. George Knapp of the I-Team is here with the story. George. Well, Paul and David, isn't too often that a mafia hitman comes forward to reveal details about murders carried out for organized crime. The disappearance of Jimmy Hoffa was one of the biggest crimes of the last century, one with roots right here in Las Vegas. The person who killed the Teamster boss was someone Hoffa trusted. And in a deathbed confession, the hitman explained why Hoffa had to go. They chant Jimmy, 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 and jubilant Jimmy Hoffa sweeps in. As From the mid-50s through the mid-70s, Jimmy Hoffa was a rock star of organized labor, as well known as Elvis or the Beatles. His rapid ascent through the ranks of the Teamsters Union was made possible in part by friendships Hoffa forged with high-ranking organized crime figures across the country. They helped keep Hoffa in power. In return, he allowed the mob to use the Teamsters Pension Fund as its own bank. Tens of millions of dollars were loaned to mob-owned casinos in Las Vegas. It got the town started uh, uh, before uh, banks would loan money to casinos, before Wall Street and public equity, public debt funds uh, were available. Um, that's, that's where you got money to start building uh, casinos. But for Jimmy Hoffa, I don't think any of this would have happened. Former prosecutor and homicide investigator Charles Brandt thinks Hoffa probably deserves a statue in Las Vegas because of what the pension fund loans meant to the town, even though the loans came with unwritten strings attached. The casinos that took the loans allowed the gangsters to skim millions of dollars as part of the deal. Like the rest of the country, Brandt is fascinated by the disappearance of Hoffa back in 1975. But unlike most, Brandt says he knows what happened on that fateful day. The man who killed Hoffa, he says, is former Teamster official Frank Sheeran. He knows because Sheeran told him, as detailed in the book, I Heard You Paint Houses. In 1957, Jimmy Hoffa had become president of the Teamsters, and he wanted to consolidate his power, and he needed some muscle. He contacted mob boss Russell Buffalino, who was his one of his closest allies in the, in the mafia, looking for muscle. Russell put Sheeran on the phone with Hoffa. And the first words that Hoffa uttered to Frank Sheeran were, I heard you paint houses. And that means you kill people. The paint is the blood that spatters on the walls and the floor. And uh, Sheeran said, I do my own carpentry work too. That means you dispose of the bodies. Frank the Irishman Sheeran, a mountain of a man, was a professional killer who worked mostly for Russell Buffalino, one of the top mafia bosses in the country. In the 1970s, Sheeran was listed as one of the only non-Italian La Cosa Nostra figures in the U.S. In all, Sheeran's believed to have murdered more than two dozen people. Sheeran was the Luca Brazzi to Buffalino's Don Corleone. When Buffalino told Sheeran to report to work for Jimmy Hoffa, Sheeran says he started doing hits on behalf of the Teamsters. As a thank you, Jimmy Hoffa created a Teamsters local in Delaware and put Sheeran in charge. Sheeran and Hoffa became very close. He became uh, Hoffa's um, uh, trusted East Coast guy. Uh, he traveled with Hoffa. Uh, he did an aw they did an awful lot together. Sheeran loved Hoffa. Uh, Sheeran said to me that when it's time for you to go, they'll send your best friend. You'll be talking about a football bet, and the next thing you know, you'll be dead. And they selected uh, Sheeran to kill Hoffa because at the time, Hoffa was very leery. He knew that he had uh, enemies that, that wanted him dead. Hoffa was sent to prison for jury tampering and planned to return to power upon his release. According to Brandt, Hoffa arranged a $500,000 bribe to the Nixon administration, money that was skimmed from Las Vegas casinos and delivered to Nixon's Attorney General John Mitchell by none other than Frank Sheeran. Nixon then pardoned Hoffa, but rival Frank Fitzsimmons had become the Teamster president and wouldn't step aside for Hoffa. Anybody the mob was concerned that the headstrong the Hoffa might spill the beans again. about the dirty loans to Las Vegas casinos. So Buffalino and others decided Hoffa had to go, and they gave the job to Sheeran. I'm gonna build, I'm gonna whack this guy. At the end of Sheeran's life, as he was dying of cancer, he made a confession to Brandt on tape. There's no question but that Frank Sheeran was telling me the truth.
Tomorrow night at 11, we'll hear Frank Sheeran, in his own words, describe what happened on the last day of Jimmy Hoffa's life, how he was murdered, and where it occurred. Then on Wednesday night at 11, we'll tell you what happened to the body. Hint, it is not under Giant Stadium. Mm. Charles Brandt, the author of I Heard You Paint Houses, will be in Las Vegas this week for a book signing event at the Reading Room at Mandalay Bay. It's slated for this Wednesday at 7 p.m. And we have some Hoffa-related links on our website, lasvegasnow.com. Fascinating story. I'll say, what does the government think of Sharon's story? Well, I, I think that they there are a handful of competing theories, of course, about exactly how Hoffa died, but FBI documents that we've obtained show that Sharon was a prime suspect right from the beginning, although few of us have ever heard his name. Yeah. Those lawmen that we've talked to, including Stan Hunterton, say that Sheeran's story rings true to them, and tomorrow we'll have information corroborating Sheeran's account of this story. Bone chilling. Yeah. Thank you, George. All right. Officially, the disappearance of Teamster leader Jimmy Hoffa back in 1975 has never been solved. The FBI believes Hoffa was murdered by mobsters, but who was the trigger man? Well, tonight we hear from a man who says he's the one who pulled the trigger, even though he and Hoffa were close friends. The yeah, I-Team's George Knapp here with an exclusive uh, detail on that. But Dave and Paula, Mafia hitman Frank Sheeran had a euphemism for murder. Whenever he killed someone, he said they went to Australia, meaning down under the ground. The murder of Hoffa was likely related to what the mob was doing with millions of Teamster dollars here in Las Vegas. Tonight, Frank Sheeran speaks from the grave about how Jimmy Hoffa died. And I was not then guilty, nor am I guilty now. When he emerged from prison in the 1970s, former Teamster President Jimmy Hoffa announced he wanted his job back, even though he'd been warned by Mafia associates to back off. The mob was concerned that Hoffa might reveal the connection between Teamster loans to Las Vegas casinos and the cash being skimmed from those casinos. Hoffa had to go. On the last day of his life, hours before he was killed, Hoffa placed a frantic call to Las Vegas. This FBI telex shows he phoned the Dunes Hotel to speak to his lawyer, Morris Schenker, who'd bought into the dunes with a Teamster loan of his own. Just a few weeks earlier, Hoffa had visited Las Vegas to meet with Schenker face to face and with casino owner Mo Dalitz, another recipient of Teamster money. Hoffa finally agreed to a sit down with his mafia nemesis, Tony Provenzano, presumably to work out their differences. They were to meet at the Red Fox restaurant in suburban Detroit. Hoffa insisted that his trusted muscle, Frank the Irishman Sheeran, be there to back him up. In mob slang, Sheeran painted houses. That is, he killed people. 25 to 30 hits in all. Most carried out at the orders of mafia kingpin Russell Buffalino. If, if, if a guy's going to talk about, uh, he's going to do something, he, he's not going to say, I'm going to go, I'm going to go out and whack this guy or something like that. No, he, he just say you're going to paint a house for you. Late in his life, as he was dying of cancer, Frank Sheeran finally told the story about Hoffa's murder to his longtime lawyer, Charles Brandt, who's written a book, I Heard You Paint Houses. During the last 31 years, there have been others who've claimed knowledge of what happened to Hoffa. Sheeran appears to be the real deal. So they selected uh, Sheeran for the hit. And Sheeran said to me, you don't say no. You, you don't say no to Russell Buffalino about anything. If I said no to Russell, Jimmy would have been just as dead and I'd have gone to Australia with him. And so he was in a position where he had to do it or, or he'd have been killed. It took years before Sheeran told his lawyer everything about the Hoffa hit. Sheeran had already been mentioned as a possible suspect in a few Hoffa books. He told Brandt he wanted to tell the truth about that day. Gave me chills. I'm looking at him and I go, he killed Hoffa. In recorded interviews, Sheeran slowly filled in the blanks. He and Brandt retraced the events, starting at the restaurant. Sheeran said he was one of three men who arrived in this car to pick up Hoffa, who got into the back seat. The meeting had been moved to a house, they told Hoffa, this house on Beaverland Street, a short distance away. Hoffa walked into the house with Sheeran behind him, and Sheeran put two bullets into the back of Hoffa's head. There's plenty to corroborate Sheeran's story. For one thing, Hoffa was cautious. He wouldn't have climbed into the car unless someone he knew was there, someone like Sheeran. From the beginning, the FBI considered Sheeran a prime suspect. Agents have tried everything to get him to talk. 
When they first searched the car, police dogs detected Hoffa's scent in the back seat, just where Sheeran said Hoffa sat. Agents also found a human hair, but it wasn't until 25 years later that DNA testing confirmed it was Hoffa's hair. As a young prosecutor, Las Vegas attorney Stan Hunterton wrote and defended the motion that allowed the government to seize the car and preserve the evidence. He thinks Sheeran's confession rings true. I believe that Hoffa was lured into the car, which we seized. There had to be somebody, uh, and perhaps more than one person, in the car that he trusted. He had to be killed quickly, which means fairly nearby, and that's also consistent with uh, Sheeran's uh, confession. In 2003, days away from dying, Sheeran gave Brandt the okay to go forward with the book. Brandt believes the hitman was trying to reconcile for murdering his friend Jimmy Hoffa. He's one of the best men I ever knew. If Frank Sheeran killed Hoffa and it looks that way, what happened to the body? Turns out the trail leads here to Las Vegas. The answer tomorrow night at 11 o'clock. Charles Brandt, the author of the book about Sheeran, is holding a book signing tomorrow night at 7 at the Reading Room at Mandalay Bay. And we have some links on our website if you want more information. That's LasVegasNow.com. Any other suspect who might fit that bill, though? Uh, no one's even close, really. Mm. There, there's one mob figure named Sal Brigulio who was high on the list mm. of suspects for a while. He was suspected also of cooperating with the FBI. He was murdered on a New York sidewalk in 1978, and the man who pulled the trigger was Frank Sheeran. More Ka tomorrow. Kind of blows that giant stadium thing, but what the heck. Yeah. All right, thanks, George. It's been more than 30 years since Teamster leader Jimmy Hoffa disappeared. The FBI believes Hoffa was murdered by the mob, but no one has been able to find his body. So where is it? The yeah, I-Team's George Knapp is here with new information that might finally answer the question. It's a trail that may end here in Las Vegas. In a sense, yes. Uh, you could say the murder of Jimmy Hoffa began and ended in Las Vegas. Hoffa was killed because of mob activities on the Strip, and it's likely the only person still alive with direct knowledge of Hoffa's death is someone who lives right here, right now. People have been digging around for Jimmy Hoffa's body for a long time. There's a good reason they haven't found it left has been stated publicly that I'm controlled by gangsters. I am not controlled by them. Jimmy Hoffa wasn't controlled by gangsters, but he certainly was beholden to the mob, which had helped him land the Teamsters presidency in the first place. Hoffa's successor, Frank Fitzsimmons, was under mafia control, according to lawmen, and did what he was told, especially regarding loans to Las Vegas casinos. Hoffa was a threat to that arrangement. In July 1975, he vanished forever. Well, everyone was sure organized crime did it and everyone was sure he was dead. I mean, he hadn't just disappeared or gone to a monastery, so. Stan Hunterton and everyone else in the Detroit strike the office were galvanized by Hoffa's vanishing act. Within a few months, the FBI had compiled the Hoffa X memo, a list of nine solid suspects. They knew Hoffa had gone to this restaurant and was picked up in this car, supposedly to attend a meeting with mafia figures Tony Giacalone and Tony Provenzano. But that's where the trail grew cold. In the ensuing decades, there have been many unsuccessful searches for Hoffa's remains, including a massive dig at a Michigan farm this summer. All manner of rumors have surfaced about the body being under giant stadium or in a swamp or chopped up into dog food. No one knew for sure except the killers. The Hoffa was, if you have to know, Jimmy, was no, was no weak man. Frank the Irishman Sheeran was a Teamster official, Hoffa confidant, and Mafia hitman. Near the end of his life, as he was dying of cancer, he confessed to his longtime lawyer, Charles Brandt, that it was he who gunned down Hoffa at this house in Detroit. How many shots were fired at Jimmy? Two. You were the shooter. That's right. Brandt wrote this book based on Sheeran's confession. Forensic evidence taken from the car and from the house support Sheeran's version, which has convinced Hunterton and others that Sheeran probably did it. The FBI always had him listed as a prime suspect and has tried to get him to talk. If he squeezed the Charmin in the supermarket, they'd have arrested him and they hounded him. And they got him, and they sent him to jail for labor racketeering for 32 years. But the only person Sheeran What's talked that? to was Brandt, literally a deathbed confession. So what happened to Hoffa's body? They took the, they took the body to the incinerary. Okay, and that was uh, a funeral parlor? Funeral parlor, yeah. Oh, Jimmy was, uh, was, was, was put into the incinerary. 
cremated. According to Sheeran, two other men were waiting inside the house for Hoffa. They were cleaners, Sheeran said, assigned to handle the scene and the body. What happens to the blood in the house? Sheeran identified the cleaners as brothers Tom and Steve Andretta. Those same names are listed among the FBI's original suspects. Hoffa's body was bagged and whisked to a mortuary that was less than two minutes' drive from the house. It was immediately cremated. How incredibly easy it would have been in 1975 to illegally dispose of a body in one of those ovens in a cremation box that's never opened, it's sealed, it's put in the oven, an hour later it's gone. An hour later, all trace of Hoffa's gone. His jewelry is dust. He was, he was buried in the ground here to count him. What we found was there wasn't, there wasn't nothing left but dust. As for the alleged cleaners, both served prison time following Hoffa's death. Steve Andretta died a few years ago. His brother Tommy, now 68, lives in Las Vegas in a quiet neighborhood. The I-team sent a request for an interview but received no response. Is this the final word on the Hoffa mystery? Probably not, but those who know the case well say all the pieces fit. It may not have happened exactly that way, but I think that's the gist of it. While no one was ever convicted for the Hoffa murder, the Justice Department prosecuted more than 30 mob figures for other crimes uncovered during the Hoffa investigation. Basically, everyone linked to the case did time for one crime or another, including Frank Sheeran and Las Vegan Tommy Andretta.